Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, I want to spend some time looking at the different SharePoint options you have available for Copilot Studio. Because this is a question I get asked a lot. Is that, Daniel, can you show me how exactly can I integrate SharePoint with Copilot Studio? So as I double click on that word integrate, a few other options pop up. The first one is authentication. Second is the content. And then finally, where do you want to display this agent? So I'll cover all of those questions in this video. So stick around because this is very, very important. But first, here's my intro video. So when we start looking at the different SharePoint options available for Copilot Studio, the first question that I want to ask is that who is it going to be? Because based on that, we are down to two possibilities. The first one is, is this agent for your anonymous or public access or is it internal? Now, just to be clear, when I talk about this anonymous or public, it literally means external. That is on your company's external slash public facing website. Because sometimes when we say public, what people think is your internal website where everybody has access to it. And so people get confused. Your like public could be in your internal everybody employee. What I'm specifically saying is that this is the anonymous public, which means your external website where everybody in the entire internet has access to it. If that is one of your requirements, well, then it goes down one path. But if it is for internal only, only people inside your company, whether you want to put it on your Copilot website or in Teams, well, that leads down to another path. So boils down to two of these possibilities. So let's take a look at that first option, which is anonymous or public, because that takes you down to this path where three of these questions need to be answered. The first one is, are you going to go ahead and build a custom agent? Because when it comes to this custom agent, we are purely talking about building it in Copilot Studio. And over there, it will require manual authentication. Now, when it comes to Copilot Studio, this is purely either low code or developers. Because now, yes, developers can also go ahead and use the SDK kit and actually do hardcore development inside Copilot Studio. So you've got both the options. You can do it purely low code, or you can also do heavily developer work. And that means you will have to use Copilot Studio to build a custom agent. The second one is you've got to go ahead and do manual authentication. If this is for your external website, then you have to go ahead and set up an Azure app registration. And before people can have conversations with your agent using SharePoint content, they have to authenticate through it. And I'll show you that in a minute. And finally, the license, because in this case, the license does change. Since it is external, we don't know how many people are accessing it. So with that, it is at an agent level, the Copilot Studio agent level access license. It's not a per user, it is an agent level. So these are the three main points that you will absolutely have to cover if you're going down this path of building a custom agent with SharePoint as the backend for an anonymous or public website. So I want to show you this example that I already have from this agent. Right over here, you see I have something called as a receipts agent. And all this information, the discussion that the agent has, it is actually gathering knowledge from this backend SharePoint. In fact, one of my SharePoint site has all my receipts. So when I come over here and I go and click on extend it, you will see this is where all I, I keep all my receipts. So the agent is actually going to refer to this information as the end user is having discussion. Basically, they just want to know all the information about their own receipts, which is saved over here. So the back end is SharePoint. However, this is going to be on a public website, your company website. So there is some authentication work that has to be done. So if I now go to my settings and I go to my security right over here in their authentication, if I go and expand that, you see I've got all of this other authentication work that absolutely needs to be done. You cannot get around it. In fact, one of the requirements over here is to actually go and register your app in your Azure. And I'll quickly show you that. See in your Microsoft Azure under app registrations, I have an app called as Copilot Studio with SharePoint. And just to briefly show you right over here on the API permissions, all of these different permissions absolutely need to be added for the actual collaboration to work on seamlessly. So I'll show you the final demo, all right? I'm gonna come over here. Let's go back to our agent, 
go back over here to the receipts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like I'm an external anonymous user. And to really test that, I'll come in and I'll grab this link, go to demo website, but I'll actually just grab the link and we'll come over here. All right, I'm going to open up my Microsoft Edge. I'll come up and open up a new private window. And here is where I'll go and paste that link. So you get the full effect of the anonymous access. Moment I click enter, it takes me over here and watch the agent. The first thing it asks is, hey, to continue login. Now, this may seem like it's additional work, but this is all good stuff happening over here because over here, multiple authentication or multi-factor authentication happens before you can even access the backend SharePoint. So it's really good from a security standpoint as well that if you absolutely have to go down this path, don't worry. Your SharePoint content doesn't easily become publicly accessible. You have to go through this multi-factor authentication step. So check this out, all right? I'm gonna go and click on login. And when I do that, another tab opens up and you have to actually go through your authentication piece. So I'm just gonna go and put in my information quickly so you can actually see what's going on. This is the multi-factor authentication which I was talking about. I'm gonna go and take care of that quickly. Select verify. And then now I'm gonna click on yes. Moment I do that, it'll give me a validation code. I'll click on copy, come back to the original place, I'll my messages, I'll go and do a control V to paste it, and I'll hit enter. This is the MFA I was talking about. But see, see, now the agent comes up and is ready to have that conversation with you. But this only happened after we went through that multi-factor authentication. So this is all good, but, but it is all absolutely required because you just can't talk to the SharePoint content in the back end. You have to go through this authentication. So this is the big one that I wanted to show you, that if you have to use SharePoint on an external public facing website, you will have to go through this authentication steps. All right, so now let's switch gears and focus purely on the internal access. Because over here now, you have a few options. One is, yes, you can still go ahead and build your custom agent using Copilot Studio, but over here, it only uses the Microsoft authentication, which users, you and I already do. When we are in our tenant, we are going from one service to another service, we are authenticating in our Microsoft authentication. And one of the places to deploy this custom agent internally is inside Teams. The other option is you can build a no-code agent uh, directly using Copilot Studio, but in your Microsoft 365 Copilot. And I'll show you an example of that as well. This is a place where you can build that agent with absolutely no code. And this is only available for your internal side. So for the custom agent piece over here, which you build with Copilot Studio, these are the things that you will need to go ahead and set it up. You can use a combination of adding your existing knowledges or new knowledges, add some topics to really control how the conversation is going on, and then even actions, just in case you need to go ahead and use some other services both inside or outside your tenant. All of this flexibility is available. In addition, you can deploy that either in Teams or even take that agent very similar to what I showed you for the anonymous access, but it will be for your internal people. And since it's internal, embed that into a SharePoint site. Like this is how you can go ahead and deploy it in two different places for your internal custom agent. So here is a custom agent where SharePoint is my data source or my knowledge, and I'm gonna be deploying this internally. So to do that on my settings, see on the top right, when I can go over there, I go to my security, right under authentication, you see authenticate with Microsoft is selected. So that's one place. Next, I need to make sure that I can actually go ahead and deploy it. So for that, I'm gonna go back to the agent itself, go to channels, and over here, I'm gonna deploy it in my Microsoft Teams. So I'll go and click on that, this pop-up window comes, it is gonna ask me, do you wanna turn on Teams? I'll say, yes, I'll turn on Teams. And it does all of this magic by itself in the backend. And now it says, hey, the channel can be added. So I can literally click this one over here. It says open agent, when I click on it, and in my case, it's actually gonna open up directly inside my Microsoft Teams, and here is where I can go ahead and add it. So now that when I'm adding it in, it will create this agent directly inside my team, and it says add it successfully. So now if I go and click on open, right here, I can go ahead and have a conversation with this agent inside Teams. In addition, I could go ahead and even add this to any one of my other teams and chat with it by at mentioning it. Or what I could do is actually go back over here go and grab that link right over here. See that custom website? I can go ahead and grab that link and then embed that directly into my SharePoint site as if the agent is built into it. Those are the two options available 
for still your custom agent that you built in Copilot Studio and put them into your own tenant. And if you still want to use SharePoint, but purely from a no code standpoint to build these agents, you can do that as well because you have the option now to go and build using instructions and knowledge. And you can do that directly inside your Microsoft 365 SharePoint or in your Microsoft 365 Copilot. What you need are these things. You can have instructions available, you can have knowledges, and very soon there'll be actions available. Currently, actions is just not available because it's only a one for the custom agent. However, that will soon come over here as well. And then you can go ahead and deploy it again in the same places in the Copilot, in your Microsoft 365 Copilot, in Teams, and also in SharePoint. So here's the first example of building absolute no code agent with SharePoint as the backend data source. Uh, I can come directly over here to create an agent. And then right over here, I can actually go ahead and give it some conversation or I can go ahead and do it with the configuration. And once I click on the configuration right over here, see this is where I can go ahead and actually put in SharePoint. Now I can put in the full URL or I can even go down directly to the document library and subfolders level. I'll actually show you some examples. Right over here in view all my agents, um, I have something called as the MSFT, which is Microsoft Product Agent. So when I click on it, right down here, you can see that I've actually got some SharePoint knowledge. This one right over here, Microsoft Products Guide, when I click on it, it directly takes me into one of my libraries. If I go back to my agent, and if I click on my browse, in this pop-up window, you can go ahead and select any of the sites that you want, but right over here, you can actually go and select each of the libraries that you will need. And in the libraries, you can go ahead and select subfolders. All of that flexibility is directly available, which makes the overall process a lot more easier and seamless. But wait, there's more. One more interesting thing I like about this place is that when you build the agent, you don't have to go and search for it. You don't have to go and find out like, which SharePoint site did I keep it in? Or what was that URL? No, none of that. Because once the agent is made accessible to you, you literally come to your homepage, which is Microsoft365.com, select that Copilot, and on the right, you will see the agents available. In fact, you can make it easier by even going ahead and pinning it. That's how easy it gets to even find your agent and then go ahead and utilize it. Now, this is one example. The second example is going ahead and leveraging it directly inside your SharePoint. And I've got some examples for that. So if I were to go to my this SharePoint site, Power Platform POC, on the top right, if I click on Copilot, each and every SharePoint site by default will come with one Copilot agent. And as you can see, that agent name matches the site name. But you can also go and create more agents. So right back over here, if I click on this drop down, you have the option to create an agent. And if I click on that, a similar pop-up window comes up. It is asking me for what do you want this create new agent in? So we know for sure it is tied to the site, but I can go and click on edit. And from here onwards, I click on source. And now I can drill down further. If it wants to actually be part of a SharePoint site or a SharePoint URL, you've got all of these different options. Up to 20 sources can be added. So these are the flexibilities that you have at SharePoint level at two different instances, directly on the Microsoft 365 Copilot or right down to that SharePoint site level. And you're not bound by just using this in SharePoint site because of any of these bots over here, I can actually go and take my existing bot, which is right over here. See, these bots that I have, I've selected this one, Project Document Agent, and I can actually go and say that, hey, this one, copy the link on Teams, once I've copied it, I literally come directly inside my teams and that agent that we built in SharePoint is accessible directly to you in your Microsoft Teams over here. I can actually start doing an at mention by using that agent name and getting the information exactly the same experience as it would be in SharePoint. So in conclusion, when you wanna go ahead and build a agent, you need to have a plan. The first plan is who is the audience? Is it going to be internal people inside your company or is it going to be external? The external is as if everybody in the internet has access to it. Also the content. If SharePoint is the place, then is that the place where you want to go and leverage it as the knowledge in your agent? Where is the content? Where does it reside? And then finally, the no code, low code well, because you can still go and build a pro code level using the SDA kit with your Copilot Studio and SharePoint can be the backend data source or knowledge. Or you can build an absolute no code using the Copilot agent as well. You've got these options. And then finally, the cost. 
which is more affordable. Because if you went down the co-pilot agent path, that has its own license. However, if you're going to use the Microsoft Copilot and build an agent over there, well, in that case, it's a user level access. So you've got to figure out that path as well. Hopefully this video was useful to you because now you can make that informed knowledge that if SharePoint is absolutely the knowledge, your data source that you need to pick and choose, then down which path should you go? Is it going to be for your external public people or is it going to be for your internal people? Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.